I'm going to talk today about line transects and McKinnon lists because McKinnon lists also use transects. Line transects are another very commonly used type of bird survey method and they're used in lots of types of animal surveys. And so a line transect is just like it sounds. It's an individual walking a line, preferably a straight line that they've established with a random start point. Uh, walking trails uh, sometimes happens for line transects, but they're biased in that you uh, tend to observe different organisms near trails and far from trails. And so I always recommend when people do transects for you to go ahead and establish them. And a, and a general good practice is to set up your transect one day, morning or afternoon is fine, and then go visit it again the next day to do your survey because there's some disturbance created from um, walking and establishing a transect. And so you don't really need to do a lot, you don't need to cut vegetation or anything, but if you, if you walk through your straight line and sort of push down some vegetation, you may mark with a little bit of flagging the perimeters of your transect or the route. Uh, and then you can go back and you can move much more quietly. A standard length for a transect is a kilometer. Some people do shorter ones. It really depends on um, what you're surveying. Um, and it's important when you're doing a lot of transects to space them far enough apart. 250 to 500 meters is a general rule of thumb to have them, if they're running parallel to each other, um, not, never be closer than that much to one another, depending on what you're surveying. If you're surveying something that moves around a lot, you're going to need to space them 500 meters. Um, for um, projects where you're not going to be getting very far from your home base, probably surveying organisms that don't move as small, far, smaller birds, birds that are in the understory and smaller, um, will allow you to put those transects closer together. And you simply walk your transect and you document um, cases of detections for your individuals. Okay, as you can hear, I'm kind of close to a road. And so one thing you may look at is small urban protected areas um, and detections of a certain species um, in that area. Um, there's lots of questions you can address with line transects. So like point counts, you need to control for differences in habitat along line transects. And the most common and straightforward way is to simply establish what they call a strip transect. And that is, think of it as a long rectangle. And what you're doing is you're, um, you're establishing the outer bounds of what you would be able to detect there. And so you're counting everything th thing that's happening in your long triangle. You may mark the perimeter of your transect with flagging or some kind of marking, or you may map it. And this can be useful for a point count as well. I have um, an image of uh, a transect through this small area here. And um, the center dotted line is the transect. The outer solid lines are the perimeters that I've established would be as far as I could go to really detect the birds I'm looking for. And then I mark some major landmarks. Um, I'm Right now I'm surrounded by blackberry, but then further out there are some dead trees and some specific types of trees on the other side of this transect. At a set distance there is barbed wire. So I can um, mark, I can actually map my birds in this image based on where they are in relation to these other things. And then you can measure them and you have a good idea of the of which birds were in and which birds were out. I do this as well for point counts, except instead of drawing a line, I will draw a bullseye. And here's an example from a bird survey that um, is mapped with a point count. And in here are um, four letter initials, six letter initials of birds, but there's also some text that tells me where certain landmarks are. And so I map the birds in relation to those landmarks when I do the survey. So those are, that can be a useful way to go about doing a survey without having to use a lot of flagging. So you walk your transect, you document detections, and then you can come back and analyze that data, especially if it's in a transect, in a strip transect, you can compare one strip transect to the other, looking at how many individuals per area. So if you know your length of your transect and the, the, the width, the, the distance that you have marked as your edge, you basically can calculate that area of your transect and compare densities of animals in, the, in these transects. Another type of transect you can walk would be um, 
And a survey method you could use along a transect is called the McKinnon list. Some people call it the X list. It's not a, a super common method that you see professional ornithologists use, but it is a method that has been used with citizen science projects for some time, particularly in regions where the birds aren't that well known. But it's pretty effective for projects here as well if you are new to your birds and you want to survey more than one species. And so what you do when you're doing a McKinnon survey is you walk slowly along your transect, just like you would if you were walking a strip transect. Uh, the pace is usually about a half a kilometer an hour for a transect. You're moving slowly but constantly, and you're identifying the birds you see and hear. Now the advantage with the McKinnon list is that you can take as much time as you need to identify your bird, or if you really can't identify it, you can take as much time as you need to document everything you would need to know to generally figure it out. Um, make a recording of the sound, make some descriptions of what the bird looks like, and then if you can't identify it in the field, you can go back and get help identifying it um, with other resources back at your home base. So I actually started a McKinnon list in this, at this site. And the way it looks is you make a list of a set number of species. So you're only identifying species, you're not counting numbers of individuals. So I was walking up here and I made my first list, which ends with five species. So every list I make is a five species list. And so the first five species that I heard were pine siskin, song sparrow, Anna's hummingbird, American crow and spotted towhee. That was number five, spotted towhee. And so here's a, just a picture of the survey I took. And now I can go on and I start over with number one again, doing my next survey. Now I wanna make sure that between survey one and survey two, I've moved far enough that I'm unlikely to be counting the same birds twice. But if I were to start number, survey number two right now, I, the first thing I hear is a dark-eyed junco. I hear pine siskin again. I hear song sparrow. I hear golden crown kinglet. I think that's number three. I'm not sure if I'm number three or number four. I hear Anna's hummingbird again. And I hear a Stellar's Jay off in the distance. So that would be my second five species list. And I would keep moving and doing these lists until I get to the end of the transect. And so those can be really useful. And what you have by the time you finish the transect is this nice series of lists. And you can use them to compile a species um, area curve for your transect. And so for every sample, you can add which new species you detected. And we're gonna review that and, or talk about that in, in statistics. That's, that's one way to visualize and understand species data or diversity data. What you don't get with the McKinnon list is relative abundance or density of birds, but you can get an inf information on what we call frequency of occurrence. So if in every five species survey, I'm detecting song sparrow, I know it occurs really frequently in the habitat. I don't have an estimate of its abundance, but I have this other index of abundance called frequency of occurrence. And so those are two useful types of transect surveys that you can do um, for a field ecology project.